by the Lord of sea and sky. I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in deepest sin, I and will say, I who made the stars of Darkness bright, who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you. Every week is a new week, another chance to say, here I am, use me. Every day is a new day, another chance to say, thank you for yesterday, thank you for tomorrow. Every hour is a new hour, another chance to say, again and again, make me new. We do not come to this place to stay the same. We come to this place to be changed. So let us worship our holy God who created yesterday, will create tomorrow, and even now is creating something new. Thanks be to God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thanks so much for joining us today on this fifth Sunday of Lent. We are glad that you're here with us. You might want to press pause right now and grab a few things that you'll find helpful. Your Bible, perhaps a candle of light, and whatever it is that you'd like to use for your communion emblems. Then once you've gathered those things, unpause us and we will continue in worship together. Will you join me in prayer? Holy God, scripture tells us that your word is written on our hearts but we struggle to hear it. Is it possible that we have covered up your words with our own self narratives? Is it possible that we have erased your truth to write our own? Is it possible that we have forgotten your words entirely? Take us back to the beginning. Remove the self-talk that distracts. Clear away the cobwebs of doubt. Show us how to look inside ourselves for your truth and then write on our hearts once more. We are listening, we are hopeful, we are here and lift our voices together to say the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this 
is the covenant that I will make. With the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord, I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The stories of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading comes from John, chapter 12, verses 20 through 33. Now those, now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Philip and Andrew went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves for me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, <clears throat> it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from this earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The stories of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Lately, I've been thinking a lot about 
when we reconvene our in-person gatherings in our new building. We barely began to get settled in our new space when the pandemic hit and scattered us to our homes to reform yet again how this congregation would worship together. This caused me to take a trip down memory lane. It's been almost six years since I was called to First Christian Church of Ravenna as their pastor. As I entered this new role and began to build relationships with folks, and um, it was just an exciting time for all of us. It didn't take long uh, before we began the difficult but necessary conversations of the realities facing the congregation. An oversized building with an insurmountable amount of deferred maintenance made the writing on the wall visible. Do something or die. With the congregation overwhelmed by the enormity of the situation, it would take the next couple of years for us to wade through the possible scenarios for a way forward. Ultimately, it came down to two sell the building and move on, or choose to stay and plan our graceful exit from ministry. Either way, change, great change, was in the future of this congregation. Change, even when welcomed, means death. We realized that a change would happen either with us or to us. We could die to some things so that we could live to others, or we could hold on to what is and die with it. Our building was that a single grain of wheat Jesus talked about that when it fell away could bear much fruit. We decided to be reformed rather than plan our funeral. Both of our scriptures today talk about great change, life-altering change. In our gospel reading, we join Jesus as he shares once again with his disciples hints of what's to come and the choices they would need to make. This passage takes place right after Jesus' entry into, into Jerusalem. Imagine those following him and the hope and the excitement building as they looked forward to this Messiah who would save them from the Roman Empire that had oppressed them for so long. Imagine that the air is charged as an occupied people remember God's liberation of their ancestors from another empire. They're aware of Jesus' wonders and are anxious for restoration. As his lore grows and visiting Jews from the diaspora seek him out, Jesus shares the vision. In order for the seed to bear fruit, it must die. Those who follow him must go where he goes. Whoever tries to retain their life will ultimately lose it. This is troubling because the Messiah was expected to live forever. Jesus is again defying expectations. But for those who were worried, a voice from heaven confirms Jesus' identity. It was clear. Life was changing and big things were on the horizon and not in the way that they expected. In our text from Jeremiah, the people of Judah faced a crisis. Their temple had been raised by the Babylonians and their king dragged off in chains. The temple, fallen like that chaff of wheat, seemingly destroyed, yet ultimately poised for reformation. They felt as though they lost their lives. They had lost their power and prestige, their freedom and security, and in their eyes, they had lost their God too. It seemed that God was no longer faithful to the covenant of their ancestors. But Jeremiah comes along and says to the people, even in the midst of this destruction and death, 
God is still here. God remains faithful. What is in question is your faithfulness. You are the ones wavering here, not God. Instead of yet another word of judgment, the people receive this lavish promise, this unexpected good news. God will bring newness out of destruction. God will bring hope where there is no hope. God will bring life out of death. God will make a way where there is no way. The days are surely coming when the people from the least to the greatest will know God. The people will be reformed. God will write on their hearts. Despite humanity's constant breaking of covenants, God continues to seek reconciliation and pours out grace upon grace. Why not let this grace transform and reform us? It's in receiving God's grace, responding in gratitude, and offering grace to others that God forms us into who we were made to be. God saves us from ourselves, writing the way on our hearts, and gives us unlimited chances to get it right. It's clear we can't keep the covenant on our own, so God steps in, offering and fulfilling the covenant at once. What a gift. Again and again, we are being reformed. The process is uncomfortable. We want things to remain the same, the way we envision them. We don't want the thing that we love to be that grain of wheat. And yet, again and again, we read these stories that tell us that is not possible. Change is inevitable, but the good news is that when that grain of wheat falls to the ground, it has the potential to bear much fruit. The events of 2020 made us keenly aware of the broken grains of humanity that needed to fall away. We can't seem to see past ourselves neglecting our neighbor and undoing creation. We repeat past patterns and the low moments of history keep echoing again and again. We point fingers. We shrug responsibility. Yet the year 2020 taught us more about change than we realize. 2020 also reformed us as communities of faith. For our church, change involved leaving our newly occupied building only to discover that community and relationships remain strong, even when we are physically distanced. We discovered that our ministries flourish, even though we accomplish them a little differently. How difficult to once again walk out of a building that we called home. We've been here before not so long ago. We walked out of our beloved building after over a hundred years of history. And even though this time we know we will return at some point, the familiarity of letting go of something we love rises to the surface. The grain of wheat is falling to the ground. Again and again, we continue to be reformed. God remains faithful and God continues to write on our hearts. 
we desire for God to write on our hearts so that God's law can reshape and reform us from the inside out. Reformation is a journey of letting the old fall away and something new to emerge. Of returning to God's words over and over. Of being drawn into the heart of God. Again and again, we are reformed. Thanks be to God. In the Gospel of John, a group of Greek people approach the disciples and say, we would like to see Jesus. It's a brief, beautiful moment that the text doesn't spend a lot of time on. And yet, it always catches my eye. It catches my eye because the phrase, I want to see Jesus, feels like it should be my constant prayer. Help me see Jesus. I'd like to see Jesus. Bring me closer to Jesus. In the prayer of confession, we take a moment to recognize how much space exists between us and those words, trusting that even when we forget to seek out God, God is seeking us out. So join me in the prayer of confession today as we take one step closer to the divine. Gracious God, we want to see you. We want to be known as the people who looked for Jesus. But not only that, we want to be people who have your covenant written on our hearts. Why do we feel so far away from that at times? What went wrong? Where did we lose our way? Could you, would you, once again, write on our fragile hearts we would be so grateful. O oh God, who makes all things new, new stars, new dust, new life, take our hearts, every hardened edge and measured beat and create something new in us. We need your newness, God, the rough parts of us made smooth, the stagnant stirred, the stuck freed the unkind forgiven. And then by the power of your spirit, we need to be turned toward love again. God, we gather with so many thoughts running through our minds. So we give our thoughts to you so that our minds might be cleared. We give you our worries, our discretions, and most of all, we lift to you all those who need your loving touch, your healing hands, your comfort. May they feel your presence with them. We pause to share our remaining thoughts with you in silence. As we continue throughout Lent, may we be reminded of those things that need to fall away so that new life might emerge. As we move closer to the cross, draw us near. Give us courage to put one foot in front of the other to share your stories with all we meet. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Jesus' name, 
His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the love. God wants us to share this meal with you, all of you who dare to let go of your defenses and your trust in yourself or others and trust in God. Let us come to God's table with hearts of humility and trust fully in Christ who invites us all. As we each gather around our table, we remember the night that Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room. When he took the loaf of bread and blessed it and broke it and said to them, this is for you, take and eat, remember me. He lifted up the cup and he blessed it. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant and this cup is for you. So take and drink and remember me. Each time we gather at this table, we remember and we proclaim the Lord's life, death, and resurrection until he comes again. It is God who invites us to this table and we come, each and every one of us, just as we are. Each of us is to look not only to personal interests, but also the interest of others. We come together as a Church of Jesus Christ to do this. We are devoted to the mission whose benefits not for us alone. This is our opportunity to share in the important work in this community and around the world. Our sharing brings us closer to those who are in need of discovering God's hands and feet in a broken world. Let us be those hands and feet as we share the abundance we have been given. Let us pray. Holy One, your hearts abound with gifts. 
Receive this offering as a sign of our trust in you and our intentions to live surrounded by your mercy, inspired by your spirit, open to, your, to the joy of your presence, hospitable to one another, and generous towards the world, your world. Amen. As you leave this space, may your mouth speak of God's goodness. May your arms hold those in need. May your feet walk toward justice. May your heart trust its worth. May your soul dance in God's grace. And may this be your rhythm again and again and again until God's promised day. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself, go with courage, go with heart, go in peace. Amen. Go in peace and the peace of God be with you this day. Go in peace and the peace of God be with you always. Celebrate and share the joy, celebrate new life. Go in peace and the peace of God be with you.